Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the worship. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel. I'm nothing more. When you're done, please take all the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glory. Father, in this place in Sweden, take the stage, love. Holy Spirit, have your way. I'm just a vessel, nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. Lord, I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Oh, Father and our God, we bless your name. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, take over this place. Take over the social media. Take over our land. Have your way. Father, I'm just a vessel of honor in your heart. And I'm not taking it for granted. Nor will I turn to you. Take all the glory. Amen. Take all the honor. Amen. Let somebody be blessed. Amen. Let some let this your word bring a change to somebody's Amen. life. Father, let a soul be saved in your kingdom. Amen. Let a seed be sown. And you will give the increase. Amen. We thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we blessed to be in his presence this afternoon? Yes. Because I am blessed. I am. Hallelujah. Um, thanking God for this opportunity given unto me again today. It's a great privilege. I say thank you to my Father in the Lord. I can say it anywhere. I can say it anytime. And also to the mother in the house too. That is my mother in the Lord. I bless God for their life. I thank God for the opportunity they have given to me today. And I thank God that God used them to be a will for my salvation. And I pray that God will use me also to be a will, a way for someone's salvation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not taking it for granted. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. What are we talking about today? I believe this month has been tough spreading the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And we have heard that what you don't have, you cannot give out. The knowledge of God you don't have, it, you cannot spread it out. And we have heard that for almost three weeks. That is, you, the word of God has to dwell in your ministry before you go out to preach the word. But today I'm about to talk to us on working or acting that knowledge that you have received. That word of God that has been given to you. My Bible verse today is from Romans chapter 10, verse 13 to 15. And I read. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. It means it doesn't matter who. Whosoever. Either black or white. It doesn't matter where you come from, your culture or tradition. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is why you are saved. He said, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? They have not heard from your mouth. They have not heard from my mouth. Praise the Lord. He said, and how are they to hear without somebody preaching? Here is not talking about the pastor. It's not talking about anybody. Because the Bible says he commanded you and I. To go out and preach the gospel of Christ. 15 said, How are they to preach unless they are sent? We are sent. 
is not only Pastor Tutu that was sent. It's not only Pastor Nikki that was sent. It's not only the evangelism department that is sent out. Christ sent you and I. So far you are saved. As long as you are in Christ, he has given the commission. He has given the commandment. You are set. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good tidings. Wow, what a benefit. Hallelujah. The first thing I want to talk about is, if you look at that Bible verse, the first one, the 13 said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And they said, to call on Jesus, people must believe on him. That is what that Bible verse is saying. For you to call on Christ, you need to believe in him. And in this Romans 13, they are making, Paul was re making reference from Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Listen to what the Lord said. He said, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And as the Lord has said, and in the remnants, whom the Lord shall call. The Lord has called you and I. The Lord has called the world. Hallelujah. Amen. To truly call on him means that we must believe. The first thing to be truly called is that is you will believe. You will believe. It means you must believe on him that is presented to you. That was presented to us. Who is that that was presented to you and I? The word of God. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So what we need to say out, to speak out, presented to you, is the word of God. This same word, the Bible says, it is the eternal word. It is the second person of Trinity. He took human flesh. He left his throne. John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was life and the life of the light was the light of men. So Jesus that we're talking about, this word that you have to present out is the word of God, is the second the trinity. He took human flesh. People need to know that. He lived a sinless life. It was in this. But something happened in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15. He said, For we, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15. He said, For we have not an higher priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. He came in human flesh to, to know how we feel, to feel it, to see it, yet without sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And what did he do? Even he was yet without sin. He paid the debt of our sin on the cross of Calvary. He paid the price. Christ has paid the price. And when he paid the price, the Lord of hosts, the Father of all, raised him up from the dead. God raised him up from the dead. I take it again as I said, he said, the truly call means to, to be truly called. The first point is that to call on Jesus, people must believe on him. They must believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The second one, according to that Romans chapter 10, he said, for them to believe, for them to call upon the name of the Lord, how, will, how can they do that? They need to believe. So the second point that says to believe on him, they must have heard about him. For someone to believe in Christ must have heard about Christ. Paul says here, he said, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? You have not heard about Christ. How are you going to believe about? How are you going to believe that Jesus is the Son of God? How are you going to be, how are they going to believe that is the way, the truth, and the life? If somebody has not spoken to them. So this is what Paul was trying to proclaim. He was trying to tell us a message that was given by the revelation of Jesus himself. Jesus 
said it himself in his word. It's not my word, it is not from my brain. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. What did the word of God say? He said, But I satisfy you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither receive it of man. Salvation was not, you didn't come to give your life to Christ because somebody said you must do it. I always tell you people, the day I gave my life to Christ, I did not know what happened. But one thing I know is that a seed has been sown. Someone has been saying it. Someone said, talk about it. It was a seed. Paul said, I sow the seed and pull the water. But God gives it in it. That seed that you sow in somebody's life, somebody else will come and water it. But the Lord of hosts will give the increase. So I realized that the day I surrendered my life to Christ in September 2002, I realized it that it was the seed that has been sown. The water was watered. And I heard the word that day. And God just, the Holy Spirit just gave the increase of everything I have heard before. And I, I had no choice but to give my life to Christ. Because I heard it life. I heard it, it was life to me, it was wrong. Praise the Lord. So that is how we need, when we are going to act, you are not to speak your word. You are to speak the word of God. Galatians 1 to said, for I, not, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Himself. Christ will reveal himself to that person. Your job is preach it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 17, verse 8. He said it here. He said, For I have given unto them the word which thou gavest me. Christ said it. He said, he has given unto you and I the word you will meditate on day and night. The word that God has given, he has given it to us. And they have received them. You have received this knowledge in the past three weeks. And they have been, and have known surely that I came out from thee. They, when you know that Christ is the Savior. And they have believed that thou did send him. You know that God sent him. So to call on Jesus, somebody must believe in him. How can they believe when you have not spoken? When you are to speak, speak the word of God. Speak Christ to them. Hallelujah. Yeah. The third one is to hear him, they must have a preacher. Now this is our job. You and I, we are preacher. You don't need to hold the mic to preach the word of God. You are a preacher to speak to your colleague. You are a witness. A preacher here. You know, when I was looking, I was looking at it. What does it mean? Why, why, why are they, when I was studying it, it, it means keriso, means herald. And the meaning is someone who proclaim the good news. Or don't you proclaim the good news? Yeah. Hallelujah. So you are a preacher. You are the herald that God is talking about. You are Christ's representative here on earth. He said, he said, Christ sent the witness. That is what God did. I'm just being practical and at the same time, at the same time letting us know the word. Christ sent you. Christ sent the witness. The witness proclaim the word of God. The people heard it. They hear when you proclaim. They believe because you proclaim the word of God. People call and those who are called are saved. When you speak the word and people will hear, after hearing, they believed. And when they believed, then they will call on Jesus for salvation and they will be saved. And that is recorded for you in heaven. I don't know, but you know when you speak the word of God to somebody, 
then we should, we should have an habit of when you wake up in the morning you're going out just tell god just bring somebody my way i'll be honest with you i don't do it all the time but i do it and you will definitely bring somebody and you will make sure even when i'm afraid that how do i say this because of where i am the person is is in self or herself will just wonder somebody will just say they are home they came uh, they came, they are, their generation is from Abe. I'll just say my own generation is not from them. They said, why? Some people are from dogs. I said, because I'm not a dog. Okay, where am I from then? I said, because I'm created by the most high God. Mm. Mm, they'll be wondering. No, no, they don't want somebody to, to tell them what to do. I said, God is not telling you what to do. Christ is only telling you, I am the way, the life, the truth and the life. Is either you follow it. God has told you, choose one. This is the way. You choose one of it. It's, I've given you, you have two ways, but he said, it is good. I am advising you. Choose this. I said, it's not forcing itself. I believe, to me, it is a seed. And that day, my heart is full of joy. Mm. And I realized that it's not me. It's because God is looking for somebody that is available. Just be available. To sow a seed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, what happens when no one proclaims? You know what happened? I said it that when you proclaim, this is what happened. But what happens when no one proclaims? No one hears. No one believes. No one will call on the name of Jesus. And no one is saved. You are saved because somebody proclaims. You are saved because you heard it. You believed. In the one you have not seen. You have not seen him. But in the revelation of his word, you, you see him laugh. Because his word is yea and amen. His word is life. It's sharper than any two edges one. Unless the person is not speaking the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So for you and her, that is our job. To proclaim the gospel, it has to be initial by God, initiated by God. And he has given you and her the word. Go ye, he said go. Proclaim. You are not to do the rest. Your, your job is to do your work. God will do the rest. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you and I, we are commissioned according to Matthew 28, 19. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We are commissioned to preach the word. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. He said, I charge thee. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Please, the word of God is important. Is powerful, is needful, is active. Hallelujah. So I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at the appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. It didn't say preach your language. It did not tell you and I to preach your story. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all, all long suffering and teaching. So, what are we talking about? If the Bible has told you, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth to witness to every lost soul a testimony of God's grace. That is who I am. I don't know about you. Because it is the grace of God that found me out of darkness into his marvelous light. So what is this great commission that God has given to us? I have told us in the beginning that the most important thing is that they call on the Lord. And no one can call on him. No one can be saved unless they believe. No one you can believe on whom they have not heard. You know, at times you just come to church, you just take the seat and sit down. You are not even sure whether the seat is, the, 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 we, are, we are not even sure the seat is okay. 
but you just sit down. God is more powerful than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our commission, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Jesus said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. No other power. He said, All power. Every, all power is. He said, All. Not, he didn't say some powers. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. I read it earlier. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. It is a command. God is not asking, he's not telling you, you have given your life to Christ. You have enjoyed the grace and mercy of God. So you, our job is to obey his command. And lo, I am with you. And he said you are not alone. Even though I am commanding you to do this job, you are not alone. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. This great commission is authoritative command. It's a directive one. God directs it to you and I. It's a command. It's a command is given to his church. We had, I think, the two, um, what's it called? Um, what we did to, to, around 220, the Sunday school. When the, the person talking said that, he was talking about the church. The church is not the building. The church is you and I. So God is commanding his church, and which is you and I. So nobody is left out. Nobody is too small. Nobody is too big. Just go and preach. He ordered us to do this. So what are the things that God has given us according to the word that we read? You know, Matthew 16, 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. He said, I say also unto thee, thou art faith. God was talking to Peter, but he's talking to me. He said, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. God is telling you, upon you, he said, he will build his church, and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. Have you ever seen the word of God returning to him, boy? Have you heard it? Never. That is what he said. So the first thing he said, we have a divine mandate. We have what? A divine mandate. The mandate of a great commission. To do what? Go. It didn't say you should, you should sit down. You are taking the knowledge. You have you wanted you want to spread the knowledge of the glory of God. You cannot do it sitting down. You can't do it doing nothing. What is it in your hand that God has given to you that you need to use? Even though something is being spread around, you still have your social media. You still meet people at your workplace. Those who are students, you meet your professors, you meet your colleague. So the word is saying, go. Is an action word. Just lift up your body and go. Pick up your phone. And we had it for the past three weeks. We as we, we you know sometimes we pick up our phones, we will just be bored, we'll just be looking at it, and by the time we look up, time is gone. Yeah. Time is gone. Just go. Tell somebody, go. Make a move. Make a move. Hallelujah. There are two ways we can do this. There are two ways we can do this. First, the first way is your lifestyle. Make a move with your lifestyle. It involves your lifestyle. You cannot tell somebody to give their life to Christ. And at the same time, you, are, you lie in the front of that person. Yeah. And you're preaching Christ to the person. You can't tell someone to give their life to Christ. And you are saying swear word. 
Hello? Ah. Hallelujah. So it involves our lifestyle. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Matthew 5, 13. It says, like salt, our life should create a test in people for the Lord. You know, there's some, there's some things, I think Pastor shared his testimony that, you know, as his dad, his workplace, maybe when, I, when he was in the UK, that people go out for party and they realize that, ah, they come back and talk about it. And then you'll be wondering, now, when did they give the invitation? You know why? They can't invite you. Because they know, they know. They know, even if they invite you, they're not going to come. So what is, they don't want to waste their time. Let your lifestyle show that. Let your lifestyle show that. Let people be able to say at your back that, no, don't worry. You can't do that with this. I have a testimony too. You know, somebody will say something, no, the funny thing is women face. Because when you're working with me, you can't swear. I don't need to open my mouth. When I look at your face, you just say, oh, check that for lot. That is the remember. But it's not that I commanded them. I see it in a way. They see it. I don't say it, but I see it in a way. At times, I remind, I remind them, don't you have children? When your children start saying the same word in your presence, how do you feel? Then they realize it and it's not good, but it's not, it comes automatic. But when you're working with me, you don't say it. So what is it in your life that people see? Your lifestyle. Let people know that you are a child of God. The person you want to preach Christ for, let your lifestyle preach it first. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our joy, our peace, our differences from the world should cause them to want to know where we are like, who we are. You know, when everyone is afraid and they saw you with it, that you are so peaceful, is your life sad? Because Christ knew the hope of glory. The Lord has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind. People will see it in you. That is your lifestyle. So for you to, for you to, for this divine mandate, for you to do it, for you to, how to do this goal, to move, start with your lifestyle. Start with it. The second thing to do is involves, it involves our lips. What do you say out? What is the word that comes out of your mouth? You know, here in this land, they are so fond of saying when about the weather, they like it so much, it's like, um, oh, the bad is like it. You know, like, if you are not careful, you will join them. They will say it to you. Yeah, even though it is like that, but it's raining, it's raining. We can change it. Because I didn't make it. At that time, say, I don't want to say things that people say, but watch your lips. Our lips, what we say out of our mouth, is very important. So making disciples or to instruct them, you need to watch what comes out of your mouth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the divine mandate that has been given to us is that we have a is that we have a divine the commission rather we have a divine mandate. The second thing we have we have a divine message. You already have it. The word of God is in your mouth. The word of God is in your mouth. I said it earlier, speak the word, not your own word. It is a message that has a potential to change somebody's life. I heard it. I just walked into the church. I decided to walk into the church that they come early and let me see what is happening in the church, you know. Yeah, they said they have a new pastor. Let's see who is the new pastor. And I just came that day and I was hearing something from the people. I was like, what, what is this message? To me then, because I have no understanding, I have not seen the light. But when you hear the word law, that day I was hungry because I heard what sells most. But the second time, I didn't hear that. I heard the word. Maybe that day I was there just to hear the story. 
for that second day. I planned myself to go. I don't know why, but you know, you you know you are not. It's something that I'm not used to. Like people are going to church. I don't. I'm not a Christian. Why should I go to church? I go to church when they are cooking. So I go that day. It's a different day. I woke up a different person, and I went in the morning. And God has already prepared the word, and I heard it. It's the same way. God has prepared someone to hear the word from your mouth. God has prepared someone to hear the word from my mouth. You are here. Esther heard the word that maybe you are in the king's palace for a time like this. Maybe you are in Sweden for a time like this. Please, let us speak the word. John chapter 1 verse 11 to 12. He said, Jesus came to this world to die on the cross. I'm telling you the word. You want to say to somebody, Jesus loves you. What did, why did he love me? He came to this world to die on the cross, rise from the dead, and open a way of eternal salvation. Speak the word. The same thing in Luke chapter 19 and 10 is the word. Mark 10, 45 is the word. Speak the word. Tell somebody, say, speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. No one is going to hear when you are telling them story or you want to tell them what comes out of your mouth. No. Speak the word. That is the seed that is sown. Praise the Lord. You want to tell somebody, he gave his life for you and I. He died. Yeah, the person might feel, you know, might feel. I realize something that when you're taking, talking to people about Christ, there's this kind of fear. You know the fear? Fear of living in old ways. Fear of people. Fear of, I'm going to have a new life. Fear of, somebody's going to command me. Or fear, you know, all those kind of fear. They have it. They, don't, they just don't want to hear it. Even though, they knew, they know that was the truth. So why that is why you and I need to continue to speak the word. One day, someone will think, ah, Jesus loves me. Only you are not there, but you have already said the word. Jesus loves me. Why? Who, who is this Jesus? That is when God brings the increase. When he is ready. Speak the word. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have a divine mandate. We have a divine message. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have a divine mission. It is a mission. We have it. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to every man every woman. And he now said it to them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, but she shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He expects you to tell it where you live. That is the divine mission. He expects us to reach out to all people without regard of their ethnic, heritage, race, their past, their lifestyle, their economy. It doesn't matter. That is the divine mission. He expects you and I to speak to sinners because they are candidates of the world. To hear the message of the cross. They are candidates. Just like when you and I were candidates. But now you are serving a great God. The divine mission is sent to the lost. They need a savior. Someone that an unbeliever needs a savior. If they don't know him, they need to. That is the mission. They don't know you. They need to. So it 
it is a command that is the authority has given us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. After the divine mission, you have the divine mantle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. A divine mentor. Hallelujah. Amen. He said he has given unto us. It is expedient for you and I to go. That I will send to you a comforter. Holy Spirit is not going to remind you the knowledge you don't have. We have promised in his presence that lo, I am with you always. That is a divine mentor is telling you. I'm not, I know I'm sending you between wolves. Just go. But he said what? I am with you always. He did not really say that. He said he also promised that he promised us his power. Because he said all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto him. So Christ is looking for who is available. Christ is looking for who is worshipful. Christ is looking for who is submissive. Christ is looking for a man that is prayer. All this I have said, you can't do it alone. You pray first. Ask God for guidance. Make a move. Tell him, God, I want you. Send me. Speak to me. Preach to me. Sing through me. Blow through me. Praise the Lord. And when you do that, these signs will follow. Say so they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is, when you are there, Holy Spirit will convince. Or convince them. I'm not talking to you alone, I'm talking to myself. God is telling you, said, forget, don't let the language be a barrier. You know, there's a difference between praying in tongues and speaking in tongues. Peter spoke in tongues and everybody understood that language. It was not Peter's language, but he spoke because God wants to say something to somebody. Do your part. Meditate on the word. Pray. And let God speak Swedish through you. And you'll be amazed. It is my it, for me, it is what I am hoping for. It is my it is what I am hoping for. So what are you hoping for? You have heard the word. You have the knowledge of the glory to spread out. So God is sending you today. Are you available? Will you be prayerful? Are you ready? He's telling you, you and I, and may the Lord empower us Amen. to do His will Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for now, some uh, frustrating about the say of God, my letters. We brought on Jesus good. Oh, from uh, Johannes, he will turn, so her not seven. Verse 10. Thomas order. Here be the city of the war. Who can be who can be those shena beggar? Your beating come to shena in the beggar. Now yes, it's for a day to the ill. Your hair beggar. Sanian Olivet. In the committee for them, for them, Uto Yenon. So on the list now, you know. We spray that yes, it's shallot. On the way in the Avenger to scar, go. Yes, it's a Avenger for them. On the way, Shenna, elevate near of honor. You can go to Warren's website, RCCD Jesus Connections, RCCD JC dot com. And you can also scream uh, via Facebook Live. We hope us at Jesus Good. Stay that it is your part in Jesus' now. Can we please be, just be on our feet as we just thank you for the word? Yes, just, just, just tell God.
God, that Lord, I am available. Use me. Just tell him that Father, I am available. Use me. Tell him your heart is open. The Lord, I am available. Use me. You'll be amazed how he's going to use you. You'll be amazed. If you have anyone already, write their name out. Their names, write it out and pray for them. That God will touch their hearts. And by the time you speak his word, they will receive in the name of Jesus. Tell him you are believing. The Holy Spirit will ask you. Thank you for your help. We thank you. We we'll bless your name. In Jesus' name, have we prayed. Our Father and our God, the rock of ages that lifts up our head, the creator of heaven and heart, we thank you for your word. Lord, we have heard your word. You said in your word you are looking for a man. Lord, we are available. Use us. Use us to spread your word in this land. Use us to spread the glory of your knowledge. And let Sweden receive. Father, let there be great revival. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we just close our eyes for two minutes? And then we also pray. Um, first thing that one of the things I did from the word is that we should just speak it. We should never be afraid. Even when you say it, it looks like the person you are saying to doesn't take it seriously. You just speak it. Because by speaking it, a seed has been sown. And when you speak it, another person had to eat in another encounter, another person had to eat. With time, that seed will grow and bring salvation to that person. And so we should never stop. If you check your Facebook, your what's it called, your Instagram, your whatever all those things, TikTok, can we say that your platform is spreading the knowledge of glory of God or knowledge of glory of the world? Can we look at your platform and see Jesus being spread? Or Jesus being made viral? Or you promote other things, you spread, share other things. You know, this job must be done by us, and the Lord will enable you. Amen. The Lord will enable you. Amen. And uh, because they spoke a lot of Swedish, so we will speak in uh, English, that if you are hearing today, maybe just like, you know, all Peter needed to hear was for a cock to crow. You know, all like we were told, Esther needed to hear was somebody. She's been giving excuses, but that man now told her, I said, maybe you are in that kingdom for such a time like this. And that's all Esther needed to hear. And immediately she responded, started doing the right thing, fasting and everything. And God used her to save a whole nation. Maybe you are hearing what we are saying today for just a time like this. We are in a very interesting time whereby you cannot joke. You cannot take God for granted. You cannot play all those games. If you are for God, you are for God. If you are not for God, you better don't play. Don't joke with it because you can get born. So if you are hearing me this afternoon, you are not a Christian. You have not given your life to Christ. I want you to make that decision now because tomorrow may be too late. Mm -hmm. So if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, maybe you are here in this hall or you are hearing me now online, I want you to just raise your right hand like we've been told. I will continue to say it. Whether you listen or you don't listen, I will continue to say it because I know there's somebody that today is their day. Amen. And I pray you will be one of them. Amen. So if you are here or you are online hearing me now and you want to can we close eyes, please? Just lift up your right hand. And lifting up your right hand means you surrender to Jesus. And I will pray with you 
And as I pray with you, by faith, you are a part of God's kingdom. And it shall be permanent. In Jesus' name. Okay. Please, church, I want you to join me so that you can encourage those that are making that decision by saying after me, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come I come into your presence. I receive your word today. And I admit, I admit that I have sinned. And I am a sinner. And I need a savior. Your word has been spoken to me today. And I say in the name of Jesus that I accept. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse all my sins. Wash all my past. And Father, I will become a new man. And a new woman. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I join with the saints of God. That I am a child of God. I am being forgiven. My sins are cleansed. I am born again. I am a Christian. I am a child of God from today and forever. Amen. If today is your first time of praying such prayer of this nature, you know you have seen us pray it, you just pray it just for the fun of it, but today you are praying it from your heart. I want you to contact us. I want you to write to us. I believe our information will be on the screen for those watching online. And maybe through our Facebook or uh, what's it called, YouTube, whichever medium you are watching it from, contact us. So that we can give, support you with information that can help you to stay. You know, we even if you are not in our city, we can help get you connected. And your story is going to be a story of greatness in Jesus. Amen. I also believe in my spirit that there's somebody that I've heard the word today. And that person is going to become a pastor, a great pastor tomorrow in Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. And I pray for everybody hearing the word. That as you begin to spread this gospel, the power, God said, it will be with you till the end of the day. God will be with you as from today in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. I pray that all everywhere you go, there will be beautiful things happening in Jesus' name. Amen. I was praying for somebody early this morning. The person is having birthday, maybe yesterday or today. And I noticed, I told the person, I said, you have lived in so many countries. You have lived in Nigeria, you have lived in Sweden, you are currently living in Canada. And everywhere this person goes, she always leave a mark behind. Mm. I pray as you are spreading the glory of God, you always leave a mark behind you in Jesus. Yes. That when people remember you, they will remember you for good things. Amen. I will pray for anyone that maybe they are backslidden. I pray, Lord, restore them. Amen. We ask for your mercy. Since March, we've been crying for mercy. Because we know without your mercy we are famous. Before your mercy we are concerned. Without it, sorry. Lord, for your mercy, have mercy on these people. That they will not be lost in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, that they will not be lost in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who have waxed cold, Lord, we ask for mercy today. We ask for mercy today. That let your mercy touch them. So that they can come into fellowship. We thank you, Father. Thank you, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Why is this standing? Just one last announcement that I missed out. On November 7th, we are having what they call Real Man Conference. Can we say amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We are having what they call Real Man Conference. And it's, so unfortunately, it's only for men. It's only the men. And, but I will advise you, sisters, encourage your husbands to be in that, that meeting. It's going to be on Zoom. It's only on social. Are we having it on YouTube or anything? Zoom. Yeah. Zoom only. Okay. So it we are not going public. to put it for that. It will be public. It will be on YouTube, uh, oh. Facebook. Okay. Yes. So, but please encourage your husband, your brothers, your uncles. Somebody says, you not say your boyfriend. 
just encourage them to be in that meeting. You know, because the boyfriend can become husband though, after. <laughs> he can come to that meeting and become a husband by what they will hear. Because the title of that, the theme of this Lehman's conference for this year is, Who is your father? That's the thing. Who is your father? I don't know where from where they come, where you come from. They usually ask you that question. And if you can't answer that question, what it means is you are a bastard. When they say, who is your father? And you cannot say, this is my father. Or you are ashamed of to identify who your father is. Where I come from, I don't know about Sweden. You are seen as a bastard. But you have a father. Praise the Lord. I say, you have a father. I say, I have a father. I have a father. Oh, and he's almighty, almighty father. father. So if you don't have a physical father, there's a father that is bigger than father. Yeah. And he will always be your father yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And when you connect with this father, you see that the confidence you have lost, it will come back in Jesus. Yeah. And then on the second day, which is November 8th, is Father's Day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> We are going to have men's choir uh -huh. and they are already rehearsing. Okay. And if there's any day, some people, the, the reason why they became Christians is because they are going after food. Woo! So if you know anybody that likes food, that's the day for them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell them to come to church, but there will be food in church. I didn't, I didn't mention him, did I? No. <laughs> some people, that's how they became Christians. So maybe there's another person that's about to give their life to Christ Amen. by praising food to church. Amen. So that Sunday is a Sunday. Food, our men will supply food. And, and it shall be a great day in Jesus' name. Yeah. Okay, they call it swallowship. It shall be well in Jesus' name. Can we share the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, some mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.